Good morning. My name is Gary Peterson, and I'm the Variable Data Account Manager here for Domino in North America. The last two times at Label Expo, we focused on the need of speed when it comes to variable data printing. Certainly, the speed is still very, very important, but sorry folks, this year no flight suit. It still fits, but it's a wee bit too tight. Instead, we're going to focus on a few things. First, we're going to discuss a market for variable data printing that is continually growing year on year. We're going to have a nice chat about a new global standard that's going to change the way labels will be presented at point of sale. I'm going to introduce you to Domino's new K300, which is a part of our new portfolio for our monochrome variable systems, along with the total solutions that we have as well. First, a quick refresher. What do we mean by variable data printing? It's essentially changing any elements within a label. It could be text, graphics, a serial number, date and lot code, linear barcode, 2D barcode, or even the ever-present QR codes. Variable data applications are consistently growing, and they include track and trace, food safety, promotional, logistics and reverse logistics, and now will even have effect at the point of sale. Let's first talk about a market that continually grows. The e-commerce market has been growing at an 8% clip year on year in the past three years. Now, based on the purchases my family makes in the boxes that land on my porch, you would think that that's somewhere close to 10 to 15%. But we'll trust that it's only 8%, representing a $6.3 trillion marketplace. When we talk about e-commerce labels, we're talking about the labels that support e-commerce. Most of the labels act as a license plate to track a product throughout their logistic cycle. It could be barcode labels and warehouse and inventory management type labels, or something like a pallet label so that you can track your products through to its final destination. There's numerous labels that support this and will continue to grow as the marketplace grows as well. Another area of growth that we're seeing is in the QR code label marketplace. It's estimated from 2023 to grow from one and a half billion to three and a half billion in 2033. That represents over a two and a half times growth in the next 10 years. While we're seeing this growth, I believe that these figures are very conservative. And let me share with you why. There is a change coming and a new global standard where the UPC barcode will be moving from a linear format to a QR code format. Now, a little history. The UPC barcode celebrated its 50th anniversary this year. And actually, the first product ever scanned with a UPC barcode was a pack of Wrigley's gum from a grocery store in Troy, Ohio, back in 1974. So let's go on the Wayback Machine here. What happened in 1974? Godfather Part Two won the Oscar for Best Picture. The United States of America had two presidents, Richard Nixon and Gerald Ford, in the same year. Jaws wouldn't be scaring people out of the ocean and back onto the beaches for another year, and the Star Wars franchise wasn't born until three years after that. So as you can see, the UPC barcode in its linear format has served us well. But as technology has changed, so is the standards. There's going to be an evolution or dare I say revolution, from a linear format as it is today to the QR code format. And there's a project called Sunrise 2027, which is a global standard where all retailers will have the ability to scan a QR code as the UPC by the year 2027. What does that mean? That means now that brand owners can add additional information into the same QR code that serves as the UPC, such as serial numbers, date and lot codes, unique identifiers, all in, the, all in that code without taking up additional real estate. Now, if you want to take your cameras out and shoot that QR code, it'll take, give you more information about what we're talking here today. So at the retail point of sale, it's still going to give them the inventory control. It's still going to give them the pricing information. But imagine if it had its own unique identifier and serial number and the product was expired. When a patron went to go scan that product, it wouldn't allow them to buy it. 
If it was recalled, it wouldn't allow them to buy it. Therefore, keeping somebody from maybe potentially getting sick or potentially deadly consequences. That's a great insurance policy, isn't it? So the retailer is going to have additional uses now for the code. The manufacturer is going to have the ability to track and trace their products throughout their logistic cycle. And in doing so, they would know, too, if a product was, say, recalled. They could track it down to the unit of sale and warn the appropriate people with it. However, one of the bigger benefits is going to be to the actual consumer themselves. With the use of a smartphone, I would be able to scan a product, know what its expiration date is, perhaps know what its best buy date is, get nutrient, allergen information, promotional opportunities to engage with the manufacturer, um, and also if there was a recall, I would know about it as well, so it would be product safety. With that power, the brand owner is going to want to unleash the potential of the new format, and they're going to look to everybody in the room here to help them out with that. And that the label converter and the packaging converter are the ones that are going to put this variable data down for them. Probably the best way to show you is we're going to demonstrate our K300 here. It's a new system with Domino. It's a 2.1 inch print window. And we're going to be printing the UPC code in both its linear format and the new global standard of the QR code. It's intended for applications where you maybe have wide web applications where you just need a little bit of variable data. It could be used potentially in a late stage differentiation model, whereby you would have pre-printed light labels and put that just-in-time information, such as the UPC, on for the customer. It can also be integrated into a number of different packaging applications that are out there. We're also scanning and verifying that the barcodes and the variable information is accurate with our Lake Image Discovery System. Lake Image is a sister company of Domino, and we pride ourselves on providing total solutions for customers, and vision becomes a very important component of that, especially if you're printing this new UPC, you're going to need to guarantee your brand owner and the public that those codes are scannable throughout the logistics cycle. On the systems here, you'll notice we are integrated on a Mark Andy Pro Series Flexo platform. It's a modular system, servo-driven, with electronic registration control, essentially simulating that we can install our solutions on any of your existing flexo or converting assets or any new assets you might be purchasing either at this show or at a later time. Now we're going to talk about where we talked about the growth area where we had with the logistics labels that support the e-commerce market. Fun fact, Amazon delivered over 7 billion units uh, to their customers worldwide. 4 billion of those were in the US, 2 billion in Europe, and the balance of that throughout their global network. With that, our customers have had to answer the bell for Amazon and other logistics companies to print the labels that provide these license plate numbers. Probably the best way to describe that is to look at it through one of the eyes of our customers, Abbott Label. John Abbott from Abbott Label had a vision. He saw that variable data was growing and it fit well for his business. So he consulted with Domino, and here's John Abbott, everybody. How about a round of applause for John? <laughs> Anyways, this man has a vision, and we're able to put together a solution with our K600i dual bar system here, which can run up to 492 feet per minute. It is not the slowest link within your production, and it will not compromise the production. John's business grew with the implementation of our dual bar system to the effect that within a relatively short period of time, he invested in his second system, which I happen to say was recently installed, to handle the additional business opportunities and capacity. With the speed of this system, John has been more competitive, profitable, and able to deliver product to his customer in a timely format. So the need for speed is still real here. We don't compromise your production, but imagine as you make the transition from the linear barcode to the now variable barcode, you're going to want to harness the speed so you don't compromise your production of your normal labels with it. We showed you a lot of things here. First, we talked about a market that's growing. 
in the e-commerce market at 8% per year. We also introduce you to the concept of the Sunrise 2027, which is the global initiative to evolve the linear UPC barcode to the QR code format, which is going to affect the way we present labels to customers. You've also seen a new option within our product line, the K300, and the ability for us to provide a complete solution for you with camera verification. We'd love to continue the conversations about variable data, whether it's on your Flexo assets like you see here today, or perhaps on our digital systems as well. Thank you for your time here today and have a great show.